You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. Take us through some of you. You briefly talked us through a little bit earlier as far as imaging on lipoma versus liposarcoma, but can you kind of take us through these um, these uh, fatty uh, sarcomas? Yeah, liposarcomas uh, are are also actually pretty common for us to see. Probably more common than the. Um, than pure fibrosarcomas. So we see a lot of liposarcomas and then there are a couple of different variants of them. There are spindle cell liposarcomas, there are round cell liposarcomas, there are myxoid liposarcomas, et cetera. And so, um, and those are based on, you know, some of the associated cells. Uh, what you want to look for in a liposarcoma um, is uh, lipoblasts. That's kind of the pathognomonic cell for a liposarcoma. So in a normal lipoma, you're going to be see big um, sort of univacuated adipocytes, um, really tiny nuclei, right? They're very acellular, largely, right? Sort of minimally cellular, not acellular, but pretty minimally cellular. Uh, sarcomas though are going to start to look hypercellular. You're going to have pleomorphism. You're going to have one cell that when you compare it to the, its neighbor next to it, those two cells don't look the same. Uh, things look like they might've been coming from who knows where. And though you might see some sort of normal fat cells, what you really want to look for are those lipoblasts. And so lipoblasts, um, are multivacuolated, um, cells with, uh, often eccentric, uh, eccentric nuclei. And, and, um, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, there's a great picture of some lipoblasts, uh, there, but they are tiny little multivacuolated things. And so as soon as you see those, you know, you're dealing with a liposarcoma. Um, and then the, the additional features, right. Come in sort of at a higher level, but, um, getting this into the category of liposarcoma, then you're, you're in a good place to know what to do with it next, especially on an exam. Yeah. And so the MD, MD2, I always see that, that they always, you know, MD, MD2 stain positive. Is that just for liposarcomas or can you also have that in a lipoma? So a plain lipoma uh, will not have, um, will not have MDM2 amplification. So um, MDM2 is uh, a gene product that we can uh, stain for, um, that the pathologist can stain for, and it helps to differentiate a lipoma from a well-differentiated um, or these uh, atypical lipomas that we think of in the extremity that the general surgeons call a low grade, right? Lipoma like liposarcoma. So um, presence of MDM2 lets you know that you're not dealing with a plain lipoma, but more an atypical lipoma. Um, and that's really how they are, uh, how they're used to help us. Okay. And can you quickly like walk us through some of the main, this is just a, if those watching on, on YouTube, this is a, a slide from the pictures I got straight from Miller uh, for re reviews. And they kind of go through a difference to what to look for lipoma versus liposarcoma versus the differentiated liposarcoma. So can you quickly uh, or briefly just kind of point out the high yield points for us to know. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so lipomas, right, are going to be tumors that are, are composed of, uh, benign, right. Benign appearing, uh, fatty fat cells, right. So when you spin that, uh, that magnet in the MRI, that tumor is going to look like fat, regardless of it's a T1, you know, a fat sat T2, a proton dense, it's always going to look like just homogeneous fat. And then histologically, right, has no features concerning for any kind of malignancy. Atypical lipomas, right, or the, these, um, when they're in the retroperitoneum, like low grade lipoma, like liposarcomas, um, start to get a little bit more heterogeneous. You may see some stranding in them. Um, right. So they're not as sort of homogeneous and, and ISO intense with fat. And then histologically, you see that same thing. You're going to see more cellular areas in it. Um, but again, it's not going to have the degree of pleomorphism, the amount of, um, mitotic activity that, uh, that a high grade sarcoma has those low grade liposarcomas are going to be MDM two positive, um, as are your D differentiated liposarcomas. And so as the name implies a D diff liposarcoma is something that has lost its cellular differentiation. So that when you start to look at those cells in that very high grade D differentiated 
component, you can't tell visually, right. That they were ever fat cells or that they were trying to become adipocytes. And so it's that mixed in with characteristic features of a liposarcoma. So seeing lipoblasts having MDM2 positivity helps, you know, that that's a de-differentiated liposarcoma, which is, is a high grade soft tissue sarcoma and treated as such with radiation, big surgery, stuff like that. Whereas these, the other two are treated simply with a marginal excision. So all all great question. points. Yes, no, okay, it, it, it definitely <laughs> did. It, it for sure did. And and quickly touch on the. I know we mentioned there are a bunch of different subtypes. And at first, when I was first thinking, I was like, oh, there's no way they're gonna ask this on the subtypes on the exams. But I was I was quickly wrong, uh, and and had to try to figure out how to. Um, note some of these different subtypes and yeah and the subtypes they like the most i I have seen um they like the mixoid liposarcoma and they like the d-diff liposarcoma because you can see those um really clearly some of the the low grade subtypes are hard to distinguish and probably a bit too a bit too challenging but that mixoid liposarcoma has a couple of good characteristic features so you're going to see some adipocytes you then need to be able to identify all those little lipoblasts. So again, the multivacuolated um, cells. And then what you'll notice is that they're sitting in a background of mixoid matrix. So mixoid matrix um, stains uh, basophilic. So it's a little bluish, a little bit purplish, and it's going to look like this sort of loose, disorganized. One of my mentors used to say, it looks like snot for lack of a better (laughs) word, right? But that's a good... And if you've ever cut into one of these or operated on a mixoid tumor of any sort, I was going to say, if you've ever blown your nose, that's what I thought I I thought (laughs) was about to say. That's what mixoid (laughs) sort of looks like and has the appearance. So if you can use your imagination and see this sort of loose bluish stroma wrapped around all these little adipocytes and, and most importantly, lipoblasts, you know, you're dealing with a mixoid liposarcoma. Okay. And I know they always talk about like that. I've always seen that like translocation between yes. 12 and 16 always associated with and mixed liposarcoma. That's why they like to ask that. That's an easily testable point. Yeah. And then, and then our pleomorphic versus our differentiated, how do you tell uh, the difference between the, these are our high grade, um, liposarcomas that have high chance yep. of mets. Yep. Yep. So pleomorphic sarcoma, um, is going to look like, uh, this, a high grade sarcoma, but you still see some, some features in the sarcoma itself, right? So that stuff that if you're watching this on YouTube, like on that slide on the right, that there's these fat cells and lipoblasts mixed in with the sarcomatous cells, right? You're seeing mitotic figures. There's one in the kind of upper right corner that looks like it's got, you know, a bazillion condensed chromosomes in it. Yeah. That one right under. So just to the right there on the edge, right? So you're seeing this all mixed together in a de-differentiated liposarcoma. You see kind of normal appearing fat, right? Or some normal appearing fat cells juxtaposed with an area of high grade, uh, sarcoma, right? A tissue that appears to be a high grade sarcoma where there's not as much of the, the kind of lipoblast and stuff mixed into it, but rather you're looking at kind of more normal ish fat sitting right next to high grade sarcoma. So that in that image that's there, you can see the areas that look kind of like a lipoma. If you looked at that, you know, one corner in isolation, but then there's this stuff next to it that looks really cellular. Um, that if we got that under high power, you'd see the mitotic figures, you'd see the pleomorphic physum, you'd see the, the nuclear atypia, the whole bit. Awesome. 